Liam, a new manager, new jersey, new sponsor. Is this a new era for Tipperary Hurling? <laughs> I don't know, it's a lot new anyway. But um, no, it's not. Look, at I mean, in fairness, uh, it's a great honour to be back. A privilege to get a chance to manage my own county again. Um, I suppose, you know, when I, when I, when I leave in, in 2010, I did say never say never. So uh, I find myself back in the sidelines. And, you know, I suppose I'm only in a couple of weeks now at this stage. So it's, it's very early days. But I have to say, I'm really enjoying it. You know, there's a really good bunch there and there. You know, they're, they're, I suppose they're being challenged physically and they're being challenged skillfully every, every night. And uh, it is great to be back. You know, I suppose I've been very fortunate. I've been involved in the in the game for the last number of years in the in the studio, and uh, I really did enjoy that. But I guess you know probably ultimately there's nothing beats the buzz of the of the sideline if you're not inside the white lines themselves. Considering your well-respected time as a TV pundit, is there any added pressure on your second coming? No, I don't think so. You know, I mean, I, I suppose I'm very comfortable that when I go and do something, I'll do it to the best of my ability. Uh, if that means we come first, we come first. If that means we come eight, we come eight. You know, I mean, you, there's no guarantees in sport, there's no guarantees in life. But I think when you're doing something that you really enjoy and you give it absolutely everything, then you can do no more. And I suppose, I suppose my commitment to the, to the team and my commitment to my county at Tipperary is that I will give it absolutely everything uh, to make sure the team plays to its potential. And let's see where it takes us after that. In your eyes, how has the game evolved since that victory in 2010? I actually think the pace has really come up. You know, the the, the pace of the game, the the you know, the, I suppose, and all of the work that's going into the background to try and see how you might unhinge teams um, is significant now. And you know, I thought at one stage I might have to get a second bus. I mean, the volume of people that's involved in an intercounty setup now, even since my last involvement, has gone up significantly because I guess every team in every county is looking for a, is looking for the extra edge. And if that means a few extra bodies around the place, they're more than happy to do that. At present, where would you rank this Tipperary side? Well, I suppose the reality is, and the facts state that we were outside the top six in 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 2018. You know, that's where we found our found, found ourselves. Um, you know, probably that that you know, hopefully, will instill something in the lads to say, you know, I, I, you know, in what was a wonderful summer for hurling, you know, Tipperary found itself gone. Um, at the earliest time than they have been in, in in a number of years. So you know, but but I mean, Munster itself. I mean, it's just so so competitive. You know, the national league is going to be so so competitive because I think there's an awful lot of teams that will feel that if they could get an element of consistency into their play and put three or four games back to back, they could find themselves up in the in the in the latter stages of the All Ireland series. And I guess that's where everybody wants to be. But certainly, it's a it's a very very steep hill. And from where we sit right now, we are outside the top six, and the challenge for us and the Watfords and the other teams that found themselves outside uh, last year to try and see can they, can they work their way in, but it won't be easy to get in there. So you say you're outside the top six. What do you now have to do to bring these players on? Well, I, w I would feel that we, we would feel that we were probably slightly behind the curve physically. Uh, I do think we have, we have work to do and we spent the last number of weeks really working on our, on our physical preparation and ensuring that we look to, look to try and get to a level where maybe we haven't been for the last, for the last few years. Uh, because... I don't think it's the fact that Tipperary slipped back, it's just that other, other teams have progressed at a greater rate. Um, so certainly we feel there's some gains to be got in our, in our physical conditioning and preparation. It's a very, very physically taxing game and you've really got to be in top, tip-top condition. And um, yeah, that's, that's one of the challenges, I think, is to get ourselves in, in really tip-top shape. But I'd be very happy over the last number of weeks that there's significant going, win, going work going in by all the panel to try and get there. There's 12 under 21 players coming onto this panel, and of course they'll bring a winning mentality, but how do you go about gelling the young with the old in order to create that perfect blend? Yeah, I think I'm, you know, in, in that instance I think I'm quite fortunate, the fact that I guess when I came in in, in 2008, I was bringing in the minor, the minor teams from 2006 and 2007, uh, so they were coming in. Uh, so bringing in the Noel McGraths and the Seamus Callans and the Brendan Mahers and Padraigs and all those guys into the squad. And, you know, really, I think in, in any squad, you know, you have to have that mix of youth and experience. And I can, only, I can honestly say, you know, the Owen Kellys, the Brendan Cummins, the Larry Corbett's were hugely welcoming of the youth because I think any team that knows that there's new talent coming in that's going to help ultimately them who are getting on in years and in the latter stages of their career to be successful. And I think my challenge as a, as a, as a manager is to try and gel that talent because you know you won't win it on youth alone, you won't win it on experience alone. But if you can get your panel where you, you know, I, I feel we probably have a block of, of the youthful with the block in the middle and then with the block of the lads that are, that are there since, tw since, since 2010. So I think the secret is to try and get that panel really coming together, challenging each other and, and enabling you to get a really good 15 out on the pitch that has a good mix and blend of youth and experience. There's been a lot of talk about the Tipperary fullback position, rightly or wrongly. James Barry and Paddy Marr occupied that position during the Munster Hurling League, but who do you see starring at number three for Tipperary in 2019? 
Yeah, look, I haven't really got in. I suppose we're at we're at the very very early stages. I mean, really, I see that's where I see the national league has been a critical stepping stone for me and my team. Um, I suppose you know there's there's you know I've really got to have more than one person challenging for each position. Uh, if I had a wish, is that I have a lot of injuries to deal with. Hopefully, getting through those injuries. Hopefully, by the middle of the league, I'll have a lot of those injured players back and available. Because I do think we have to, you know, we, we've got to get the spine of the team right, um, and that's not just centrally defensively. I think that's centrally up front as well. So, uh, you know, there's a good bit of work to be put in. But certainly, all I can ask at the moment is that the application from the boys has been top class, and if everyone applies themselves properly, then people will get their chance. And you know, when they get their chance, it's all about taking it. And uh, but I'd be confident that I have a panel that will be able to sort out every jersey that I have available uh, to me. And I suppose the, the key thing is that everybody that isn't getting that starting jersey is really pushing hard to get there because unless I can generate that competition within the squad, we'll, we'll ultimately come up short. You talk about the spine of the team in defence and in attack. There's always talk about Seamus Conlon and Jason Ford competing with each other. Can you see those two players playing in a temporary side together at their optimum levels? Yeah, I think, I think as I said, I think every forward line needs, needs skill. Um, and needs, I suppose, versatility. And um, I think in, I think in not just in those two players. I'd be very happy that you know. I don't think I don't think a forward line will operate in one forward or on two forwards. I think the challenge for me is to try and get six forwards, which will, you know, work together and I suppose create that that um, that flow uh, up front that allows them to be to be very comfortable in the roles they're being asked to play. Because you know, in the modern game, I you know, I suppose when I started. Um, playing myself and even my early management, it was very conventional. You know, it was you played 13, you played 15. Now, I don't think the jersey or the position really matters. Um, I certainly don't make a big deal of it, and I'd be very happy that I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I have players of the caliber of Jason Ford and and uh, Seamus Callan and many more. And um, I think if I can get all them on the on the uh, on the pitch and fit and ready to go, then um, certainly that's that's something I'd really look forward to. So overall, what will your goals for this league campaign be? Is it a case of blending in players and gelling players together for the championship or will you be targeting a league final? For me, it's all about just making sure that the guys that are coming through and training are getting a chance to show me in the National League that they're, they're, um, they're, going, they're, they're up for it and they're going really, really well. So as I said, the National League is, is going to be somewhat experimental, but um, certainly uh, we will not be approaching any game within the National League where we'll say, look, let's just experiment and the result or the performance doesn't matter. I suppose we've got to try and build consistency of performances over the league. The league, I think, has been, has been very good up to the final stages uh, in previous years in Tipperary. So, you know, but I do think... Uh, if you ask me what my one goal from the league would be is that I'd have a really good sense of my championship 15 by the time we get to the International League and that's something that we will be placing a, a big strong emphasis on.